This is a quick video going over how to glue plunger tubes to uh, homemade Nerf blasters. Uh, several designs of mine require you to glue the plunger tube to the uh, rest of the blaster, like this. Um, this is a part of the Cynthia, uh, and I also do this on the slab. So I'll go over how to do it here on the Cynthia, but uh, it's basically the same thing as on the slab. When you are ready to glue your parts, you have your part that's going inside the plunger tube, and you have your plunger tube. Uh, first off, you want to get your glue ready. I personally use CA glue, otherwise known as super glue. I use this nice gel super glue um, from Loctite. Uh, it's pretty nice. It gives you better control. However, I have used normal liquid uh, super glue, and that works just fine. The way that I do this is you get your plunger tube and your printed part. You want to scuff the inside edge of the plunger tube, and you want to scuff the outside edge of the printed part. Um, I recommend that you take off the O-ring before doing this, but I'm not going to. Uh, you know what? Yes, I am. I am going to. So here we are. O-ring is off. I'm now going to scuff this edge right here, this, this edge of this uh, bluish part. Um, I recommend that you use sandpaper. I don't have sandpaper handy, so I'm using an X-Acto knife. Cutting away from you. So I'm just going to scuff up this print. And scuffing it gives the super glue some stuff to bite onto. If you're gluing onto a completely flat surface, super glue doesn't really have anything to grab onto, and it will just pop right back off, which is bad. And of course, you should be careful if you're using an X-Acto knife for this. I'm making crisscrossed patterns on this. Good. Let's see if I can get you lighting that where you can see that. There you go, you can kind of see it. So this area right here is now all scuffed up, which is exactly what we want. I'm not going to do the same on the inside edge of this. You can see that there's already a bit of scuffing, but I'm just going to do it again for video. Now, if you do the scuffing too far down, you might run into where the O-ring is actually going to go into. And that might minorly affect your seal, but it doesn't particularly matter in my opinion. Is now nice and scuffed up. Check the fit. Those two scuffed areas should meet up with each other. Now I will put back on the o ring. 
I will now grab my super glue. Uh, if you have a liquid super glue versus a gel super glue, you want to be more careful and use a little bit less because it might run all over the place. Uh, it might drip off. So I would put a paper towel down on top of your work surface and then do this over it to make sure that you don't put super glue on something that you care about. Multiple layers of paper towel so it doesn't seep through. Um, but with gel, it is much easier because you can just put it on and it will stay where you put it. But with a liquidy super glue, you want to use less and put it all the way along this scuffed area. And then what we're going to do is you're going to put on super glue. Then you're going to put this over that, like that. And then you are going to rotate this to spread out the super glue. Then you're going to set this alone and let it cure for probably 24 hours before you use the blaster. That will make sure that's a nice solid connection. It is very important that once this is curing, you do not touch it. You just set this aside somewhere and leave it alone for 24 hours or more. Um, it's very important that you are putting the glue on this piece and not on the plunger tube. If you put it on the plunger tube, then when you put this in, you're getting glue all over your O-ring. You do not want glue on your O-ring, because that will mess up the seal. So we're going to put glue on this edge right here, this bottom edge below the O-ring. And then we're going to push it in like that. So let's do it. super glue all over this piece. Rotate it to spread it out. And now I would take a uh, paper towel and wipe off the excess before it drips all over the place. I don't have a paper towel, so uh, here's some gift wrap from Christmas. This is now glued up, and now I'm going to set this aside for 24 hours. Preferably in a place where pets aren't going to knock it over, or someone else not going to pick it up and see what it is. Uh, put it somewhere where no one's going to touch it. Um, retouching on glue, you can use super glue like this. If you are using super glue, I recommend getting some of this gel stuff. It's very nice. Um, if you don't want to use super glue, then you can use epoxy, two-part epoxy. And then using the, the epoxy would be pretty much the same thing. You just take it on a popsicle stick and spread it around the outside edge. Um, the advantage of epoxy over super glue is super glue can leave kind of like a like a frosted haze when it cures, like of, of white crusty stuff. Um, that is if you uh, misapply it and you put it like if it drips places, all those places will look white and crusty. Um, if you are very careful when you're applying it, you can get it to be only white around the area where the glue is. So it would be right there. Um, with epoxy, two-part epoxy, you won't get that crust. However, it will take longer to cure. I'm using 24 hours on super glue because I want it to be fully rock solid before I use it. On epoxy, I would probably wait several days, honestly. Um, but yeah. So I'm now going to go put this somewhere where it can cure. And uh, yeah. So I hope that this helps you out. Um, as I mentioned, this is a Cynthia bolt. This is also done on the slab, which is my lever action. Um, if I grab a previously cooked Cynthia bolt, this is from a previous prototype, but you can see this stuff right here, this kind of off color area. Let's see if I can get it in, in light, this area right here. That is the kind of crust that comes from super glue.
All right, hope that helped.